Hello, this is the Greater Lagos Vision, and I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyeduku. It's been over two years of changing Lagos. Governor Babajide Sawun has been working to transform the state into a more livable mega city where people come to do business. Across the state, from roads to housing delivering, upgrading of schools, urban renewal, and rehabilitating healthcare facilities. There is a proof of his commitment. Recently, the multi-purpose car park and facility building at Onikon was commissioned. This is an affirmation of the governor's resolve to ensure the completion of all inherited projects. This is the Greater Lagos vision. Welcome once again. This episode features infrastructure, Governor Sawonlu commissions Onika multipurpose building price edifice on economic development. Lagos Investors Roundtable, no less than $15 billion required to meet infrastructure needs. Good governance, Sawonlu wins new Telegraph Governor of the Year 2021 award, promises to take governance to the highest level. A sad day. Lagos State Government calls for strategic repositioning of cultural heritage. These and many more when we return. As part of measures to extend development across Lagos and grow the economy through a robust infrastructure portfolio, the Lagos State Government has commissioned the multi-purpose car park and building at Unico. The edifice, according to Governor Sawonlu, will not only speak to all the traffic issues, but also ensure an ambience needed in that area. Reconstruction began in June 2013 during the tenure of now Minister of Works and Housing, Babadu de Fashula, then Governor of Lagos State is now completed and commissioned by Governor Babajide Sawonlu, an affirmation and attestation to his resolve to ensure completion of all inherited projects that fit into his theme's agenda. In addition to the parking floors that we have, we have a floor dedicated for social engagements. We have two banquet halls, one in which we are in now will accommodate easily 800 people while the second one here on my right is to accommodate 600 people for banquet halls and also ceremonial use in addition we have a space on this side for a private exclusive clubhouse Governor Sawonlu is convinced that with the commissioning of the multi-purpose Unicorn Car Park and facility building, traffic gridlock would become history in that area. It used to be a place where nobody could get into. And so you can see that indeed our government has converted a liability onto an asset. And I think we deserve a round of applause for that. And so all around here, you also see a lot of social activities and social clubs that have been here for decades, from Island Club to Yoruba Tennis Club to the Lagos Lawn Club to King George the Fifth Park to the Police Area Command Zone 2 here, of course to the Museum Kitchen that is right next to us, but more importantly to the edifice that we're bringing right across you, which is the J. Randu Center for Yoruba and African culture. These are facilities that are in this neighborhood and we're sure that this multi-level car park will speak to all 
of the traffic issues and all of the social integration that needs to happen around there. And so that you can see that this is well conceived, is well thought out, and it will help and reduce all of the gridlocks that usually happen around this place. This edifice that has over 384 parking lots, that has seating capacity for over 1,400, will ensure that not only is free flow of traffic, but will also ensure that there can be ambience you know, that is needed in this entire neighborhood. Special advisor to Somwulu on Works and Infrastructure, Engineer Aramidi Adeyoyi, said the edifice would extend development across Lagos and grow the economy of the state. In a city such as Lagos, scarcity of land is an issue, hence a multi-story car park which utilizes vertical space provides an ideal solution to overcome horizontal space constraints and regulate better traffic flow. In deciding to do this, we also realize that this facility building is significantly important because of its large size parking capacity, income generation potential, and its location strategically within the heart of Onikon. Its judicious use will no doubt help absorb vehicles that would have otherwise parked on the roadside and other illegal parking spaces along the corridor with its attendant negative impact on traffic flow. She also highlighted the scope of works for the project. Five levels of parking floors with a capacity of 384 vehicles with offices for tickets and restrooms on each floor. The sixth floor is designated as multi-purpose mixed use consisting of a clubhouse of about 410 square meters capacity. This provides additional recreation facility for this area that has both Island Club and the Riba Tennis Club at close proximity. Engineer Adeoye strongly believes another revenue for job opportunities has just been created with the commissioning of the facility, providing an aesthetically pleasing environment and more importantly, complementing the state's efforts around tourism infrastructure within the precinct of Oniko. <laughs> Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has presented a budget proposal of 1.388 trillion naira to the State House of Assembly for approval for the 2022 fiscal year. Here are some highlights of the budget estimates. The Lagos State House of Assembly was filled with State Executive Council members, lawmakers, judges and traditional rulers who came to hear Governor Babajide Sawunlu present his 2022 budget proposal. The time came for the governor to take the stand and presented a spending plan that is 138 billion naira more than that of 2021. I'm privileged to be presenting to you today the year 2022 budget proposal, which we have tapped the budget of consolidation. For good reasons, as I noted earlier, 2022 will be the final full year budget implementation for the next general election in 2023. It is therefore an excellent opportunity for us to consolidate on what we have done so far and ensure that every effort, every investment, every partnership, every policy is translated maximally into noticeable positive impact in the lives of our people. The challenging environment also requires that we focus our intervention in areas of the biggest social impact, achieving greatest good for the greatest number in the shortest possible time. He talked it the budget of consolidation. 564.9 billion naira was budgeted for recurrent expenditure, while 823.5 billion will be spent on capital projects. The budget size is further analyzed as a recurrent expenditure of 41% at 500 and 64.93 billion and a capital expenditure of 59%, 59.6% at 823.35 billion. The deficit financing will be by way of combination of external and domestic loans and bonds, which will be within our fiscal sustainability parameters. We have, we have clearly articulated our vision in tackling governance in the state through our team's agenda and have commenced the state's 30 year development plan 2021 to 2051 that will update and replace our previous plan, which was from 2012 to 2025. This is necessary given the huge global challenges 
that have come on us as a people and as a nation. The Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Honorable Mother Shiru Obasa, passed a vote of confidence on Governor Babajide Sawunlu for his achievements. But he gave an advice to the Governor. Lagos State has the highest funding debt, of course. This loan has been the secret behind most of the infrastructural development we all see all over the state. Nevertheless, we advise the executive to focus more on the tax project that will create job opportunity and reduce bottleneck in movement. That will be geared, that will be geared towards alleviating poverty. The speaker also called on President Muhammadu Buhari to work towards reducing unemployment, insecurity and poverty. Unemployment in the nation, insecurity and infrastructural decay in the country is at an alarming rate. As such, I heard Mr. President to work towards rejigging the economy. Lagos. 2022 spending plan is called the Budget of Consolidation because it is meant to help the government perfect on the gains recorded over the years. Lagos State needs no less than $15 billion to meet her infrastructure needs. Governor Sawonlu stated this at the third Lagos Investors Roundtable organized by the state's Office of Sustainable Development Goals, SDG, and Investment. He said the demand is due to the rising realities of population explosion and the state's limited geographical space. The investment roundtable was attended by foreign diplomats, members of business communities, captains of industries, and members of the state executive council. Governor Sawunlu called for partnership with investors and the private sector. He said the implementation of the development strategies of his administration demands partnership and contributions of private investors. In education, we have creative budget financing and we're scaling up our investment you know, in, in education, you know, using the private sector. We're scaling up our investment in rapid in, in emergency service, in our fire you know, um, engines and all of this with the private sector. These are areas in which government usually struggle to be able to raise the funding for it. But because of how we've been able to creatively utilize our balance sheet, we are getting the private sector that are joining us to raise the required funding you know, for some of these critical areas of our government. While assuring investors that Lagos State is open and ready for investments, innovation and collaboration, Governor Sawunlu assured investors and private partners that the state government will create enabling policies and environment for them to thrive in Lagos. And of course, what do you expect from this investment? You, you expect guaranteed reasonable return. And these are some of the things that I want to assure you. This is where, as government, we can come in and we certainly will come in to create the enabling environment, the right policies and the overall structure to ensure that you continue to strive and you thrive in Lagos for your investment to be safe, to be secure, and to be innovative and continue to, to, to excel. Indeed, we have a huge responsibility to develop critical, hard, and soft infrastructure that can act as catalyst for what you do invest in. Just a couple of weeks ago, too, you know, um, the SA, SGD were also, you know, at an investment roundtable talking about the green bonds and Lagos trying to also lead in conversations in that area. These are climate funds that are available that other cities are using. So Lagos needs to be able to position itself to be able to also access, you know, I mean, innovative, creative bonds, like what the green bonds will have, you know, and what people are using to be able to develop, you know, resilient cities like the one we have in Lagos. Not only do we, are we doing this, we'll also continue to do more and will also ensure that we continue to improve on our public transparency, improve on our fiscal discipline and on our debt sustainability. We cannot just keep a lip service to this. Any investor, any serious investor needs to know or wants to hear you that what are you doing with your debt sustainability? How well are you disciplined with your fiscal issues? And how well are you transparently running your government? Our performance speaks for itself. That's why Fitch rating recently, an international rating agency, increased not only on our bond,
but also on our sustainability, increase us to a triple A plus, you know, as a sub-national, as a sub-national, you know, and I'm sure it's also because of the kind of things that we're doing. Speaking earlier, the special advisor to Governor Sawunlu on Sustainable Development Goals, SDG and Investment, Sherlock Hammond, said the roundtable was part of shared aspiration towards making Lagos the most preferred investment destination in the world. She reassured investors about the Babajide Sawunlu administration's determination to institute business-friendly environment and measures to boost investors' confidence and guarantee trust. As the world continues to acknowledge Lagos as a regional, financial, and commercial hub, this administration has and will continue to demonstrate commitment to reinforcing this position by strengthening regulatory frameworks, improving internal security, providing necessary infrastructure, reducing administrative bottlenecks, and all that we can do to ensure that we enable business processes. Lagos is renowned for, as an, is, is recognized as an investor haven for many reasons. Lagos is estimated to contribute 30% of the GDP or more to, of Nigeria and account for more than 50% of non oil production GDP. Governor Sawolu during the event launched the Lagos Deal Book, which is a compendium of investment opportunities across the state as well as information about the incentives for making the investments and the processes for doing so. Lagos generates approximately 13,000 metric tons of solid waste daily and to achieve the level of efficiency required in managing waste in a city of this size, the private sector must be front and center while the government focuses on regulation and support by way of infrastructure and technical capacity. This was a submission of Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu at the Nordic Nigeria Connect High Powered Conference on Smart City Solutions and Circular Economy held in Lagos. This two day event engaged Nigerian and Nordic private public stakeholders on smart and green city solutions for Lagos. The focus is on how to develop a circular and smart economy with a specific focus on waste management, green energy and transportation. Governor Babajide Sawunlu listed some of the efforts being made by his government for a greener Lagos. The private sector participation, which are largely citizens focused. You know, so, so what we've done is indeed we've we'll investment in areas that we've used to support the PSPs which are facing you know, the general public. We're building new transfer loading stations for this agency, and we're also wrapping up existing composite facilities. We're renewing our waste management fleets, and we're assisting the private sector with fleet renewal as we go along. So Wulu also spoke on the wealth creation potential of waste. Following the huge investment we have made in waste management sector, as well as the transformation of our waste management practices over the last two years, we have been able to create no fewer than 40,000 direct and indirect jobs in, within that period. Furthermore, with the advent of recycling and other waste management streams, we envision that we will also be creating additional 6,000 jobs annually. I think Lagos State deserves a small round of applause for that, but we still see a huge, huge opportunity coming out from that. Ultimately, seeking innovative solutions to our challenges would start with seeing ourselves more and more as a 21st century mega city, a smart city that is playing on a global stage with similar cities from around the world. The governor also harped on the need for a change of mindset among the populace, new habits regarding use and reuse, and the immense possibilities of recycling. Very importantly, we have also realized that beyond just infrastructure, a mindset change amongst our populace needs to take a new dimension. And by this means, I mean introducing to our people a new way of thinking about waste and a new habit regarding the use and the reuse and immense opportunity for recycling of our waste. For those who know Lagos and Nigeria well, 
we will know that we are heavy users of plastic materials. So there is a lot of work that is ahead of us in terms of educating our public about the responsibility and the responsible use of disposal of plastic, to cite one example. So LOMA has therefore been actively involved in redefining its remit, expanding beyond the conventional waste management oversight to sending and building a thriving waste economy in the state. This brings to me the creation, the wealth creation potential that this over 13,000 metric tons of waste on a daily basis has. Deputy Minister of International Trade Nina Vascolati told the gathering that her first priority is on making the COVID-19 vaccine available to everyone. Nobody is safe until everybody is safe. That, I think, is the first priority for all of us, to make the world a better and a safer place to, 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 to live and to work and to co-create together. This is my first trip to, to Africa since the start of the pandemic. It's not a coincidence that this first trip is to Lagos and Nigeria. This has been in the works for a long time. As mentioned by the governor, Governor Lagos is a business powerhouse of Nigeria, the largest economy on the African continent. Lagos has roughly the population of the five Nordic countries combined together. 20 something million. But very, or most importantly, Lagos is taking giant steps in becoming a smart city. Mr. Governor, let me already at this point congratulate you on that. The term smart city is widely used and often very broadly interpreted. However, I would like to define it like this. It is use of scientific methods, data and technology to improve the life of citizens, developing the city in line with sustainable development goals that we have all agreed upon. Becoming smart requires transformation. Nigerian economist, entrepreneur and philanthropist Tony Elumelu in his presentation commended the forum for creating the avenue for entrepreneurs to interact with each other. I think having this approach, I call it the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurship approach to development, is very good. You're bringing your business leaders to this place, they're interacting with our business people, they are working together, interacting and seeing how they can do more in the areas that you've identified that are very important to, to, to drive our development in a sustainable fashion. So it's good. And final message is to the public sector. You know, you need the donor organizations, donor agencies, development partners to do, to support. You need entrepreneurs to do what they know how to do, to do what they know how to do. And most importantly, government will create an enabling environment. So when Lagos State governor was speaking, I was talking about, you know, it says so much. And, you know, the soft infrastructure, the hard infrastructure, the broadband connectivity, all of these things will make a difference. And so my message to our public sector leaders, those like Lagos State governor and government that are doing the right thing, let's keep doing more, let's continue. Let's create the right environment for our young ones to succeed so that what the development partners and what are doing is not wasted. One of the take-homes from the conference is that Lagos is open for collaboration and investment. Well, that's all we have for you in this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Lovey Kuku Oyedoku. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.